All right, with college basketball beginning next week, we had to bring in the guy who's more plugged in than Sonny Vaccaro. His one shining moment is every time Duke loses. The co-host of Titus and Tate, everybody's preseason All-American master, Tate Frazier. What is happening, Tate? Oh, man, Sal, it's so good to be back. It's uh, every Wednesday at 530. I used to spend with you guys uh, for yeah. about three years. So it it honestly it hurts that I don't have this. But now that we're doing it at the same time, it feels like uh, it feels right. You know what I mean? And college basketball is right around the corner. I know Harry's very excited about Syracuse. The whole Bayheim family's playing for Syracuse now. So we got to talk about that. But uh, it's going to be a great time. And it's great to see everybody. Hey, I mean, first of all, you were uh, the only one who would come to Harry's defense. And um, I don't know if you still have that in you, but he has been it. in a huge Thanks, slump. Buddy. I mean, nothing can get him out of this funk. He needs some words of, uh, he needs some Jim Beheim type words of encouragement. Oh, Need your God. help. Those can are going to be some Harry? harsh words. I don't know if I can say those on the air. We'll see about that. <laughs> what, so uh, you must be very excited. It starts Tuesday, right? What is, what's the preparation for you? I mean, you, you go nuts for the last three weeks. Have you been hibernating? You haven't been on the road on the crisscrossing the country with Titus, have you? No, Titus is a, a college football guy now. I don't know if you right. guys have seen this. So he, <laughs> he does college football. So that, that hurts our show a little bit. But, uh, you know, I've stuck with college <laughs> basketball. I actually flew back to Asheville uh, to shoot some promo stuff. We're, we're doing a new tournament, the Asheville Championship, and uh, Roy Williams is the host of it. I'm the other host. So um, Wow. Wow. He's really, he's really nice. fallen from grace since he decided to leave North Carolina <laughs> basketball. Um, but I was at the Harris Cherokee Casino Resort, and they had all the odds on college basketball. So I was putting some bets in. Uh, you know, I was getting up to speed on things. So I'm ready to talk about all the odds. I, I, got, I got it all figured out, so I'm excited. All right, let's do it. We'll give our stupid picks, and you tell us. And don't be nice about it. If you don't, if you don't <laughs> like them, just tell me. To, you, I got you, you don't Harry. Like them. I'll, I'll be. Right. Kind. <laughs> we have four. We have we each have one pick. We're going to give you, and then uh, unless we hit on it, you give us your best and you're a long shot and who else you think for player of the year and stuff like that. All right. I'm going to make it nice and easy. Talk me out of Gonzaga at plus 650. Now it's not a monster mm -hmm. pick in terms of odds. Drew Tim A's back, right? They have Andrew, yep. Andrew Nembart, 10 points a game. Mm -hmm. Anton Watson, Iowa state transfer Bolton is 15, five. He's good. Um, he has like 60 starts or something. The yeah. freshman class, one of the best in school history that Chet Holmgren, I know yeah. uh, brother Bry loves him seven foot one. <laughs> I just feel like Mark Fuse team just walks through that week conference. They grab a number one seed and then they're number one or God forbid number two seed. And they're going to not be higher than plus 650 going into the tournament, mm. right? Just numbers mm. wise, even if you don't love them to win, isn't 650 a nice number? It's a great number. And I think, you know, when you look at Gonzaga, I think Titus, he said this a few times on our show. He can't really buy in because they're going to be worse than they were last year. But I keep reminding him they don't have to play themselves from last year, right? There's right, no one right. in college basketball that has Jalen Suggs. They don't have to worry about that. And Drew Timmy is Christian Leitner 2.0, right? He is going to be the most hated man in college basketball. I think we all can agree on that. The more that he touches <laughs> his face and his mustache, I mean, that's going to rub <laughs> off on Chet Holmgren. Um, I mean, the Zags are the new Duke. So I think this year... Wow. Um, if you if you want to take that bet, I think it's a great bet. I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to uh, get a little bit of redemption after what happened against Baylor last year. People forget they were supposed to play Baylor in the regular season. That game got canceled last right. minute in Indianapolis. So I think if they played that game and Baylor hit them in the mouth, they play them again in the title game and they right their wrongs and they probably win the championship. So mm -hmm. there's some good mojo, some good karma, some good energy, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever they say in California, that's coming Gonzaga's way. And uh, I think that's a good bet. Plus 650. Now, how much better is it going to be for you and just for college <laughs> basketball this year as fans? As oh, actually, it's, it's just not, not it just feels arenas. real again, right? It, it, we yeah. felt like we were in this weird dream, especially when we lost the tournament in 2020. And then when we tried to make, you know, last year, piecemeal it together, make something mm -hmm. happen out of nothing. But yeah, now it feels real again, and we've got fans and uh, Coach K's last year, so we got to lock in and uh, you know give him his yeah. flowers, as the kids say. All right, F speaking of weird dreams, Harry, go ahead, um, <laughs> jump in here and give. This does feel right. like a weird dream being back on the air with Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Tate, I'm uh, I'm leaning towards Michigan at twelve to one. Mm. Uh, Howard's a great why are you so formal, now. Harry? This is not a doctor's appointment. You're like Tate, uh, I'm leaning uh, towards. This is our friend. What are you going uh, just <laughs> tell him? Okay, well, you like. I'm telling him uh, Brandon Johns from East Lansing. Sub Jackson, pretty good too. But I really liked Hunter Dickinson last year. Uh, hopefully, he got a lot stronger, a little bit stronger to get more rebounds. But he's got a nice touchdown low. I, I like this Michigan team at twelve to one. 
I like Michigan too. I, I'm always a little hesitant on Hunter Dickinson, like buying in on the idea that he's going to carry a team with his scoring. I don't know if you've watched some of these off season workouts. Um, it's probably what Ben Simmons looks like. If we got to see it before it got edited together, he's not a great shooter. Um, there has been some rumors. He wants to spread his game out to the three point line. I don't think that's a great idea. Um, but if he is playing like he did last year and he's banging inside, he's one of the best bigs in the country. I like Jawan Howard a lot. I think he needs to prove something in the tournament. So it's a good bet, but it's not on my list. Michigan's not on my list. Uh, you know, that, that's the other thing. But Harry, I'm always on your uh, side. Are they the guys. best team in the Big Ten, though? I think they are not the best team in the Big Ten. I I, I got a I got a different team for that. Wow. All mm. right. All right. You're saving that. Okay, saving it up. All right. Parley kid, jump in here. You got a mid-range uh long shot. Yeah, like uh, you know, just looking at the odds here, trying to get some good value. I like Alabama at 20 to 1 Ooh. out of the SEC. Had a nice year. I'm a big guard guy when it comes to tournament time, right? So uh, between Shackelford, no relation to Charles Shackelford. Am, am I right, Tate, when I say You're that? You're right. You're right. No yeah. relation. Okay. <laughs> Shackelford, Quinterly, great backcourt I think he's related to Jeff Shackelford, I think, the last time I checked, but I, I got I to make sure and see That's about That's a them. different one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Steph I believe so. Yeah, so Quinterly, Shackelford, great backcourt. Uh, they're the two leading scorers from the team returning this year. A uh, kid coming in named J.D. J. Davison, one of the mm. top recruits in the country. Another guard. Some people, uh, it reminds uh, them of uh, Colin Sexton. Uh, yep. When it comes to tournament time, I think these experienced guards, Davidson's not, but the other two are. I think uh, this is where these guards shine um, at that time of the year. So I always like to take those guard every teams. And Nate Oates is a heck of a coach. Yes. Former UB guy when Michael uh, was there. Uh, he's a heck of a coach. Over there in Alabama. So 20 to 1. I like to roll the dice on them a little bit. Yeah, and Michael remembers this. I mean, they had DeAndre eight in Arizona, did the number one pick. They go the four seed. They play a 13 seed with Nate Oates in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. They upset them. And I think that was when the world kind of got on notice that Nate Oates is a really good basketball mm -hmm. coach. He's also a great tournament coach. He loves to to get his right. team prepared. Uh he's great at watching tape and scouting guys. Got an NBA mindset. So I'm a big fan of Alabama and Arkansas in the SEC with Eric Musselman. Those are two teams that I think uh, nice. long shot, mid-tier odds. Those are teams to watch out for. I like that. Peak. Nice. All right, Brian, you're going with the local favorite around here. Certainly mm -hmm. were fun to watch in last March. Yeah, I'm going with UCLA at 15-1. to 1. I'm actually surprised that they're like the eighth best or worst odds. Whenever, you know, they're tied. I think them and Duke are both 15-1. to 1. But, you know, maybe the maybe the magic, not the same as last year, but they return essentially the whole team, right? Yu Zhang. Yep. Hawkes, Campbell, Riley all, are all back. They have this freshman Watson who's supposed to be a really good five-star recruit, but I don't know. I, I at fifteen to one, I just feel like those odds. You know, you know, they're the two number two ranked. I mean, whatever with the rankings before the season starts, but number yeah. two team ranked in the country. I just I feel like you know they have that leadership, that that veteran presence on this this team. So fifteen to one, I thought was really good. I think that's great. I, I actually was at the Harris Resort and they had UCLA 12 to 1. And that is my, you know, of the mm. favorites, that was my best bet. And uh, that was yes. at worse odds than you're even saying. I, I think UCLA, um, one of a lot of people have pointed to, they lost four of their last five games before they go to the tournament. They barely make it into the tournament. They barely beat Michigan State, but then they go all the way to the final four and they're one buzzer beater away from going to the championship game. They have a lot of talent. Peyton Watson uh, committed to UCLA on our show. So we're a little bit biased, mm, uh, Titus and I, um, you know, about his talent. But, you know, I, I've seen him play in person and I I have no problem believing he's a top 10 talent in the NBA. You know, he's a guy that could be picked in the top 10. So you add that on top of Hami Hawkes, Johnny Juzang, Cody Riley. You get Miles Johnson to come in to have a real force on the inside if you need a bucket. Um, they have all the pieces and you, you mentioned it earlier, probably kid, you need a guard in the tournament that can really take you there. Tiger Campbell is a true pure point guard. Mm, he knows yeah, how to control yes. a game. He knows how to control the pace and UCLA may have some growing pains. They may lose some games in December, January, February. They, you know, you kind of look up and say, how do they lose to Oregon? But when it comes to the tournament, Mick Cronin will have them prepared. And I think, it, you know, it's a great bet. I think they're going to get back to the final four and then kind of all bets are off from there. So, um, that that's that's my team. That's like my favorite team to pick. Uh, you know, this season. And Boy, that's my Tate, update. Tate is ready. Yes. Do, do you ever know anyone <laughs> as amazing. ready about a season as Tate is? It just oh. rattles off all these stats <laughs> it's, about it's, it's about amazing. twenty teams are good. I'm it, ready. It could just so ready, pick a team. And this guy, I mean, he Arkansas should be really. He should be on CBS yeah. doing yeah. like their, their shows. It's um, it's unbelievable. Tate Tate better. Steven took that job from me. Of course. <laughs> <last week. laughs> 
<laughs> Tate, better season, Dayton or Syracuse? Absolutely. Syracuse is going to have a good year. I think they're going to have a really good year. I think that they're, they're a dark horse team in the ACC. The ACC is not that great this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Jim Beheim is cooking up something. And I saw Buddy Beheim talking about how he wanted to go to a Final Four for his dad. Um, you know, oh. Gerard, they're already comparing Gerard to, to Jerry McNamara and saying that he's going to take some big leap this year. So you should be excited, Harry. I think it's a good year for the Orange. Interesting. What, what about the Flyers? Uh, Dayton, Dayton. I hope that they can get there. I mean, I think this is uh they they, re- they got really screwed in 2020. I, I can't stress that enough. I mean, Dayton was a Final Four team, potentially a national championship. That was the worst. I loved Crutcher. I obviously loved Obi Toppin, but Crutcher, I just had a soft spot for. So I, I hope that they can get back to the tournament and, and try to make some noise. But I'm I'm a lot more you know excited about Syracuse and what they can do. All right, now t- I feel like this se- season is going to be it's going to temper your excitement a little bit because, uh. like you said, it's the Coach K farewell tour, <laughs> and what you're going to end up seeing is a lot of accolades sent to him from uh. Carolina players and former players and former coaches, and it's just going to be vomitous, I think. Um, you know, by even you know probably by Christmas, I don't know how yes. much you'll be able to take of the you specifically. I don't know. Of how course, much you'll be able to of take. course. I, I think the champions classic I've heard, they're not even going to play a game. It's just going to be coach K, uh, you know, farewell montages <laughs> that's played on the big screen. Um, that's where we're headed towards. I mean, the good news about the coach K farewell tour is that, uh, I, I predicted that this was going to happen. In fact, I predicted it. I reached out to a friend of mine in Nike. This is back in February. I said, I feel like this is coach K's last year. He said, I can not confirm. I can mm. neither confirm nor deny, but I am working on a farewell tour for a big name coach in college basketball. Um, wow. So I went on our show in Tyson Tate and I said, coach K is going to do a farewell tour. About a month <laughs> later, uh, it came out that coach K is going to do a farewell tour. Look so at I, you. Look I, at you I, I, I am fired up. I mean, look, th- this is like, you know, if, if we live in the world of star Wars, that's Darth Vader, right? And this is our last <laughs> run with Darth Vader. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Wow. Harry has a friend at Buster Brown who says that Hubert Davis is quitting. Uh, for, no, I don't know. You have a new coach though. <laughs> Hubert yeah, David, you excited about this? I, I am very excited. Uh, my mid-level picks, I love North Carolina at 30 to 1 uh, to win uh, the national championship. And I think a lot say? of people, they're listening, they're saying, that's ridiculous. Uh, why would you say such a thing? But North Carolina, traditionally, if you have a five-star point guard and you have a five-star center, you're going to be in good position. They have that in Caleb Love. They have that in Armando Baycott, two guys that were supposed to go to the draft, but they came back for Hubert Davis. North Carolina in 1982, Dean Smith's first championship in New Orleans. In 1993, the second championship for Dean Smith in New Orleans. This year, the Final Four in New Orleans. Oh, and uh, Roy Williams and Dean Smith, the, their goal was to get their <laughs> guy that took over to win a national championship. So he's trying to put Hubert in the best position. I'm a big fan of Hubert. I wasn't really at first, uh, but he won me over. And uh, I'm excited. We're going to have a good team this year. Right. I the, love the, it. The pundits don't like us, though. You know what I mean? Like, I, I talk to a lot of media people. That they're telling me that I'm wrong to be so excited about North Carolina. And I'm mm-hmm. excited to see if I am. It'll be fun. Well, you had a little wrench thrown in this whole Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen thing. I feel <laughs> like you're you. I mean, you have to defend Michael Jordan, right? Uh, like Scotty in his new book takes shots at Michael, says Michael yeah. never gave anyone credit. He went off yeah. on the documentary where Michael made money. I mean, it was about him, basically. But I, I guess you. <laughs> A lot of it had uh, Scottie Pippen references. Where, where do you fall on this? I know where oh, you fall on it, but just yeah. tell us. I, I will say this. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate Scottie Pippen. Um, you know, I, I think anyone that watched any of the Bulls from back in the day, I mean, you couldn't help but enjoy Scottie Pippen and enjoy the way he played. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he affected the game. He played a lot like LeBron does now. You know what I mean? And a lot of people get upset about that. LeBron's more similar than Scottie, to Scottie than he is to Michael my opinion. Um, but in general, you know, Scotty, he hears $10 million and Scotty's upset. So like that, that's what it all comes down to. Um, we're supposed to have Scotty on the, on our show, pushing through with BJ Armstrong. Um, Oh yeah. Be careful what you say then. Yeah. You're okay. (laughs) We're going to see, we're going to see what, uh, what he's because in front of BJ, he talks very kindly about Michael and talks about (laughs) Michael as like, this like supreme, like the way that BJ talks about Michael. So mm-hmm. I always like to see like the difference between the book and uh, in reality. Yeah. Well, you got to get BJ to leave the room, like go to the bathroom or something. Then he can speak <laughs> candidly uh, with you about yeah. Michael. He'll tell the media and I'll share that to the world. Yeah. I'll so did we, did we miss anyone? UCLA, North Carolina. Did, did you like anyone else? I, uh, I, I got a big 10 favorite that uh, is a national title favorite. I picked them last year to win it all. And they got beat by sister Jean, who is, uh, you know, tried to uh, ruin my life multiple times. Uh, throughout the years. Luckily Porter Moser left. So hopefully they're done, but Illinois 18 to one. 
um, is what I saw them at. And and I love wow. Kofi Coburn coming back. I love Curbelo, Andre Curbelo, their point guard. I know they lost to Sumu, but Curbelo, I think, is even better in college. And Trent Frazier, my cousin, um, is, is back. He's one of the best defenders in all college basketball. Um, you know, he's a friend of the program. Uh, Chester Frazier also comes back from that 05 team. Now he is working with the staff. So I, I really like Illinois and what they're doing. And I also like Memphis 22 to one. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Brown, Rashid Wallace, both on staff. Jalen Duren's the best freshman in the country, in my opinion. And uh, Amani Bates also there. So yeah, those, yeah. Th those two teams I would really watch out for. And they have pretty, you know, pretty good odds considering the talent they have. We all loved Illinois last year. I don't know what happened. Mm. I mean, Kofi Colburn's 33 years old, so he really should get it together this year. <laughs> well, if it's, not this it's, year, it's not He's gonna suspended happen. for the first three games because he made some money uh, before oh, NIL. Right. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. So, so stupid. So That's stupid. That's right. All yeah, right. so we've got to watch out for that too. Not and then another stupid. long shot that I wanted to point out, uh, St. Bonaventure, they're ranked. Yeah, um, 22 first time since the 1970s and they're hundred to one odds hmm. and they're a really good team. Uh, Indiana has a preseason first team, all American. They're hundred to one odds. Trace Jackson Davis is coming back. They also have Mike Woodson, who I, I think is being disrespected by everybody in the media with his savvy and then Virginia tech 75 to one. I really like Virginia tech this year too. So those are some of the long shot guys. Uh, if you want to jump on that. All right, great. I feel ready, guys. I mean, not as ready as, as Tate, but I can't stress go. enough that like I went to this casino, guys, and there's like these North Carolina, you know, just, you know, degenerates, right? They're, they're watching, you know, the, you know, the football games that are on betting on everything. And they're looking at the odds and I start talking and, and hearing what people are on. And um, there's a lot of excitement for college basketball. And it feels like it's been a couple of years since that's been. Good. The case. Good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I think people blame. Yep college basketball for the pandemic. They blame Rudy Gobert <laughs> and they blame that big East tournament because that was cut short. Like, right. I in the think middle so of it. too. Yeah. It's like yeah. inherently in it. We have a bias towards those things. We won't <laughs> even watch the big East. <laughs> All right. We're back. Master Tate Frazier has joined us. One of our very favorites, really top one or two. I mean, I could say that I mean, Jim Cunningham will never speak to us again. Yeah. So yeah. Fine. Yeah. Don't it's worry. Fine. I'll tell Jim that you guys said all nice things. <laughs> you have a contact with Jim. I mean, I don't think he has a phone anymore. Does he goes he? in and out. He goes in and I out. See. Then randomly I'll get a meme sent to me and I'm like, Oh, he's back. <laughs> so Tate just gave us his favorites on, uh, on, on college basketball, which starts Tuesday, the season. We're all excited about it. I think you forgot one. A baby face. Joel Solomon was on your case about. Freedom. Yeah, Joel Solomon's going to be upset with me if I don't mention Speedy Claxton and Hofstra. Uh, that, that is a team. I think I think their odds were 750 to one uh, to win the title. So he, he really, feel really good about Speedy Claxton. He is a champion with the Spurs. People forget. So uh, 2003 NBA champion Speedy Claxton bet on Hofstra if you believe in those guys. All right. There you go. Now we're two weeks into the NBA season. And mm. I asked these guys, is there a futures bet that you made two weeks ago that you'd like to ditch? And what would you replace it with? So you could help us with these. I like that. Of course. Um, so I, a couple of weeks ago, said Zion. Zion Williamson would be the most improved player at 25 to 1. And he is now 240 to 1 to be most improved player. <laughs> and basically because he looks like... Um, He's more bloated than Harry after the hometown. <laughs> it looks like he ate Harry. Yeah, yeah. I think he swallowed <laughs> Harry. He and, does. <laughs> but can you imagine after two weeks, they're like, nope, <laughs> this guy, there's no chance he's going to have the improvement right. that anyone could uh, think. <laughs> 240 to one. So I'm My ditching God. that bet. That's actually him for MVP, I think, is 120 to one. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't, doesn't match up. But I'm ditching. I lost that bet. If I could trade it in or start fresh and just bet this right now, Scotty Barnes. Rookie of the year. I know it's cheating a little. He's the favorite, but he's averaging over 20 points a game for Toronto, a team I already took their over win totals, a team yep. I took to make the playoffs, plus 340, uh, in addition to be a great score. And he's getting some buzz for a team that's playing in, in a different country. He's getting more buzz than you would imagine at this point. He also is like top 15 in, in like deflected yeah. passes and swats and stuff. So he yep. plays defense. I like Scotty Barnes at Rookie of the Year. Who's come out that uh, that you enjoy out of the crop? I really like Scotty Barnes a lot, and he also has that highlight potential. You know, when Bleacher Report and all these places, yeah. you know, aggregate all the highlights. Scotty Barnes is the kind of guy that gets a block and then jumps from, you know, takes three steps and then dunks from the free throw line, kind of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. he's that kind of athletic freak. So uh, another guy I like is Josh Giddy, who's on Oklahoma City. 
Um, I yeah. Giddy with the six pick. Uh, he was supposed to play for Australia's national team. He got cut last minute. And he's been great so far. And Shea Gilgis Alexander and Josh Giddy, they're a really good combination. In fact, you know, I was talking about Ben Simmons trades. And if you offered Shea Gilgis and Josh Giddy for Ben Simmons, I think Oklahoma City says no. You're right. They don't want to get they don't want to give up those two talented guys. So I like Giddy a lot, but uh he probably doesn't have the name recognition to really get that kind of hype. And Scotty Barnes, he went to Montverde with uh, you know, Dayron Sharp and Cade Cunningham. He actually played with Cade Cunningham in high school. Um right. so the fact that they were high school teammates and now it looks like he probably should have been the number one pick is, is pretty shocking. So I like okay. that Scotty Barnes. Sorry, pick. I missed a lot of that analysis. Harry sneezed or coughed or, or <laughs> farted or shit. Hey, or okay? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what he did. Now his <laughs> video is every, every podcast. He's gone. Every He's podcast gone. Tape. Right. That was the first one in a long time. <laughs> well, that was a good one. You made up for it. You really you really saved up. All right. Uh yeah, there's uh, you know, Simmons told us, who did he say? Oh, he said Duarte uh, is 10 to 1. Giddy's 11 to 1. Scotty Barnes up to 360. He's the favorite. Jalen Green, 370. Mobley, 380. Wow, they're really, lot, it's very close. And like you said, Cade Cunningham, who just like had his first start last week, is uh, or the other day is plus 430. But all right, you say Giddy. I like I Giddy. Barnes. I like, I think Mobley is, uh, is another one that's really got to be considered because he should have been the number one pick. I, I was, I was begging, uh, the Pistons, the powers that be to draft Mobley number one, but he just didn't fit because they already had Isaiah Stewart. So you were begging your Nike friends. And yeah. I was begging Nike. everybody. I was like, anyone that could listen to me. I was like, please tell the Pistons <laughs> to draft Evan Mobley. All right. Harry is, um, sweating off COVID. Let, let him give his pick here. What would you, what would you trade Harry I, and for who? I kind of would trade uh, Giannis for MVP for Ja Morant, uh, Tate. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> he's still got a great team in, in, in terms of having Middleton, Holiday, Portis, uh, but he's fourth in scoring. Morant's th- third. He's gone from 19 points to 28 points. He's 32 to one. This team has played pretty good so far. They've won at the Clippers. They've won at Golden State. Yep. Getting 20 over 28 points a game, five rebounds, eight assists, two steals, shooting 53% from the field. At 32 to one, this Memphis team isn't bad. And uh, Milwaukee, Giannis, Giannis has had the same same average stats, not stats that he usually produces. And they've lost some bad games. They lost some. Uh, they lost to the Timberwolves. Haven't played that great. And look, the second person, the second uh, second and third scores for Memphis this year: Desmond Bain, DeAnthony Melton. Meanwhile, Milwaukee has the players that they have. It's pretty impressive what Morant's doing so far this season. I love that. I think John ja Morant is the best point guard in basketball. And, uh, and I don't say that as a hyperbole. I think he is the best. Um, he is hmm. one of those guys that, I mean, you know, I've heard the Derrick Rose comparisons, but he's that transcendent, you know what I mean? And he can affect the game and he kind of has Steph Curry's number a little bit. We remember the playing game and you mentioned mm-hmm. you know, playing and go, you know, in golden state this year. Um, I love John Moran. I, I think John Moran has the cachet with, you know, the people too, especially with Zion kind of falling off the planet. And it, it's only Jeez. boosted and elevated how great John Moran is. He's his own right? planet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that the people are behind John Moran. And the reason why Giannis won't win anymore is because Shaq only won one MVP, right? I mean, Shaq probably should have won three or four MVPs in the league, but we all yeah. got used to his dominance. And I think at this point, even though Giannis did just blow our minds by dropping 50 in a closeout game in the finals, which we need to talk about that more it, it does seem like we're kind of over the Giannis like we, we get it he's dominant we've moved on to the next guy so I like that I like John Morant well, yeah, right, let yeah. me just first say that I mean it might be a, a fine pick first of all John Morant is now tops for most improved player at plus 350 so Harry why mm. don't you just say that but for, also you trade well, Giannis. he's third in the league in scoring he went from 19 to 28 already it's super impressive. I know but Gian, you're supposed to trade a bet you didn't like like Giannis is still favored to win MVP I didn't you, love you it. don't have I didn't another like you don't have another <laughs> bet that you don't like like who did you have for most improved like trade that bet oh, I had most rebound how about most rebounds I had Capella who's only getting 10.7 this year I'm really eating my words on that because Gobert is getting 17. All right. 17 rebounds let a game. Let, let, let him keep that one. Okay. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, that one you got to keep. <laughs> Gobert's a good MVP pick, by the way. A lot of people. Uh, yeah. Yeah he, yeah, he is. Brother Bright, show, show him how it's done. What are you trading? Who are you taking instead? Uh, yeah. Well, my Tatum MVP pick does not look great. Ooh. And so I want to swap that out with Durant at MVP, mm-hmm. even though it's only plus 550. But Boston's been terrible out of the gate. Uh, Tatum's actually shoot. I mean, his scoring is is okay, but he's shooting under forty percent. I I've been watching a lot for whatever reason. I mean, obviously we get the S network here, so I'm watching a ton of Nets game. And Durant to me just seems like he's playing on a different level than everybody else right now, regardless of the rest of their yeah. their team how they're looking. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm assuming you know with Harden playing himself into shape, 
this team will start winning a ton of games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just feel like he's playing the best basketball of anybody so far. Um, also, you know, if you want to look, you know, Luca, same thing Luca last year, right? He's eight to one right now. He started off terrible. He's another guy like Zion has to play himself into, you know, <laughs> and, and Harden play himself into shape because he's a little fat coming well, in. Yeah, Luca, get, Luca was favored going in at MVP. And then um, much like last year, it's, it, well, last year his team was like 12 games out of the playoff spot before yeah. you knew it, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, and he uh, started off, you know, he's shooting three terribly again. Mm -hmm. It's like last year, but then, you know, then he picked it up late in the year. So, again, if you if you still like him, eight to one for him is, you know, probably as, as good as it's going to get for him. At this yeah. Point. Yeah, I like Durant. I like Durant to go for the MVP. I think he's also, I mean, I know a lot of people, we've, we've all kind of moved the, uh, the the conversation to LeBron was the best in the world, LeBron's the best in the world, to now we all say Kevin Durant's the best in the world, and that's the conversation. I don't know if he's the best player in the world. I still think Giannis is the best player in the world, but I think that Kevin Durant is by far the best scorer in basketball, if not the best scorer ever in basketball history. I mean, he's like George Gervin up in that echelon of scorers, so... If you want to go with what's going to get people going, like Kevin Durant could have multiple 50 point games this year. It wouldn't shock anybody. The thing with Luca that scares me is that Jay K Jason Kidd is Jason Kidd. And, uh, and Jason Kidd is going to have something to say uh, to show that he has control of that team at some point. I think he's already had some of those moments earlier in the year. So I, I don't really bet on Luca with, with Kidd. I think there's going to be some, uh, some right. back and forth between those two at some point. And, and KD knows what he's here for. He's here to prove to people he's the best in the world. So he's a man on a mission. And uh, I hope he gets the accolades that he's, he deserves if he does, um, you know, lead the league in scoring and get another scoring title and things like that. So I like that bet. I like I'm, KD to win MVP. I'm looking at some of these perennial favorites and how they've dropped in the, on the odds wise. LeBron 25 to 1, <laughs> Harden 27 to 1, um, Lillard 27 to 1. Tatum, as you mentioned, Brian, you traded him 42 to one. Anthony mm -hmm. Davis, 30 to 36 to one. I mean, can any of these guys make a comeback into the top three? I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe Anthony Davis, if he kind of turns things around and, mm -hmm. and the PR push from the Lakers gets him back into the conversation. Um, that's the only guy I can really see. Tatum is terrible. I, I just wanted to say that on the record, just so I know the fans <laughs> at home. Uh, might be upset about this, but Tatum is such a minus to that theme. He he is such a uh, ball hog. I, I love that Marcus Smart called him out. Um, I think him and Jalen Brown are playing a two man game, and the two man game is don't pass it to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they're playing. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I I feel for you, brother Brian. I mean, I thought Tatum was going to take that leap, especially after Team USA. But it, they need a coach. I mean, the fact that Brad Stevens is not the coach there anymore either. I mean, they're a mess. Uh, so I, I would stay away from Boston um, as much as you can because Hold they, on. I, I'm I'm just getting. I don't know why I would get this message, but B.J. Armstrong just booked Jason Tatum for next Tuesday on your podcast. <laughs> oh, just be, just be very careful, right? You gotta be careful. You're right. You're yeah, right. You don't right, know how right. these things work. Yeah. All right, <laughs> hey, He's only 19 though, so we got a lot of. He'll grow into it. We'll be fine. All right, Parlay Kid. What was what would you swap out? Well, listen, I'm take, I'm swapping out Cade Cunningham for my uh, rookie of the year pick. Mm. Missed a few games and comes comes back and uh, is uh, three for 22 from the field in his first two games. Uh, only thing worse than that is Harry's picks over the last two months. Uh, <laughs> <Couldn't really bad. laughs> three months, three months. It's Come true. On. Come on, Tate. Harry. Tate, I need you back. Tate, Tate, I need you back. I'm getting buried <laughs> by these guys. <laughs> I got you, Harry. <laughs> Joel, Joel was okay for a while, but Joel's even slacking lately. <laughs> He's slacking. Got to talk more about Hofstra. That's all I got to do. That's it. That's it. Well, look, Kate Cunningham doesn't have a lot of help there in Detroit either. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to put up the numbers he needs. I'm not sure if he has the, the help to divert attention away from him with that uh, Pistons team. So Tate, I'm going to jump on somebody from one of your uh, one of your teams, uh, the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Miles Bridges for most improved player, plus 600 right now. Last year averaged about 12 and a half points a game and about six rebounds a game. Right now he's uh, off to averaging 23 points a game, mm. eight rebounds a game, three and a half assists a game, two steals a game. He uh, seems like he's really turned a corner. Um, I think at, uh, he might be in the running for most improved. I know John Morant right now is the odds-on favorite for most improved, but Bridges is right on his heels, and uh, he doesn't. I don't think he's going to slow down at all. I don't no, think so. 
And he's playing for a contract too. He turned down the, the Hornets offered mm. him $60 million. He turned down that offer. So he's playing to show that he's a max player. So you know how it works. Whenever there's a guy that's, that's playing for a contract, that's he's a great going point. to be playing at, at the highest level. So, I mean, this is the year to bet on miles. Um, Michael Jordan told the whole team that this year that, that he expects to make the playoffs. So they all know what the mission is, mm. is to get out of the play and to get into the playoffs. So if they make the playoffs and miles bridges, like you said, averages over 20 points per game and eight rebounds per game. I don't see how he's not in the conversation because LaMelo and, and him are like a, a dynamic duo. I mean, I know yeah. Joel and I joke, we call them Airbnb um, that that's caught on, you know, all in Charlotte and they're just highlights, you know, those two guys. And the more that miles has those, I call them sky miles. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it just hangs in the air and uh, throws down massive dunks and people forget. I mean, he was the number one recruit in the country. Five-star kid went to Michigan state. He has the natural ability. He got compared to LeBron a little bit early on. So I think that's a great bet. And and obviously I'm a little bit biased because I love the Hornets this year. Sure. Well, t- speaking of that, we are tentatively, not Harry, not Harry, but the three of us are <laughs> me and brother Brian Parley kid tentatively going to a Hornets game. And when was that wow. going to be? February, Parley kid? February, yeah. March, sometime there. We have nice. a friend who's connected. And uh, I mean, you could join us. You could take Harry's ticket. Again, we, it's not really his <laughs> ticket because we never offered it to him. And this is the first he's hearing about it. Harry, if you'd like to join us. Snubbed again, Tate. <laughs> snubbed again. <laughs> no, you're traveling anyway, Harry. You're seeing like uh, the Grateful Dead or something in New Zealand or something that weekend. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I think I think we're gonna do that, Tate. You'll That's come great. I, I mean, I'm very happy that the Hornets are back in the conversation. It was a, as you guys know, I mean, the Bobcats. I mean, that was a really yeah. really tough era when Jordan decided to change the name in 2014 back to the mm-hmm. Hornets. Our best player was Lance Stevenson, who we just signed away from the Pacers, and uh, mm-hmm. you know that that obviously did not go well for us. So we've had some really downtrodden years, and uh, it, it's finally Mitch Kupchak doesn't get enough credit. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. he basically tanked in L.A to get all this talent into the Lakers that they ended up trading away to get, you know, Anthony Davis. And then he comes to Charlotte and builds another contender. So there you go. Finally. Well, you've said it. You've really said it all, Tate. It's great having you back. It's great seeing you. Yeah. What, a, what a happy face to see. But anyway, you got the world of five star project you have. That's what Roy Williams, that's what you're really excited about. Yeah, that's yeah, what- yeah. So I, I've spent the past 18 months during this pandemic, uh, putting together the story about a basketball camp, Howard Garfinkel's camp, the world of five star, uh, the camp is called five star. You know, we see recruits all the time. He's a five star recruit kind of comes from that camp lineage. Uh, Chuck Daly was the first coach there. Hubie Brown, uh, coach K Rick Pitino, John Calipari, um, talk to them all for this project. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, talk to Grant Hill, talk to all these players and, and got their stories. So it's a six episode series comes out at the end of the month and I'm narrating and our company figures produce the thing and it's uh, for slam and for uninterrupted. So it comes out, uh, like I said, at the end of November. I love it. I'll back yeah. whatever you do there, Tate. That's <laughs> going to be great. Lots of fun. Uh, Tate, like I said, podcasts all over the place, all kinds of promo. Really, you've grown up. Really grown up, Harry. You got to be I know. I was 12. I was 12 when I took that job. A lot of people didn't understand that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. That'll do it for another. Hey, check out our Extra Points Arcade. That's all I want to say. ExtraPoints.com slash arcade. We will be back tomorrow to preview the NFL games and a little uh, college futures action we got going. Who will make the playoffs? Who will not make the playoffs? Not the Carolina football team. Didn't work out so great. (laughs) <laughs> what what happened, Tate? We, we're rooting. Oh, we expected man. Big it was things. a it was a tough year. I uh I, I kind of bought the you know the good thing about Mac Brown is that he's a great salesman and uh he sold me because uh, <laughs> I, I, I was I was all the way in yep. this year. I thought that we had something special happening, but uh you know, we're we're a five hundred team. We play Wake Forest this weekend, so we got one last shot. Oh, that'll group. be fun. And, right. then, and then and then Tate sold me, and then I think I took everything with North Carolina <laughs> this year. I, so I, I'm shit. sorry, brother Brian. <laughs> I've had a lot of people that are very upset with me, and <laughs> none more so than myself. You'll be doing a documentary with Mac Brown, and I'll be fine. Like a year and a half. Right, right. There you go. All right, that'll do it for another episode of Against All Odds for Tate Frazier for the Degenerate Trifecta for Spaghetti and Meatballs and Babyface Joel Solomon. I'm Sal saying so long and happy handicapping. Na, na, na.